What's up, what's up, guys? How we doing? Uh, welcome to the live training today. Uh, we're going to be going through the listing presentation. I'm going to give a couple minutes for everybody to, to log in and everything. Let me close the door. I hope you're doing super well. Let me get everything together here. Give me a big thumbs up if you guys can hear me. All right, let's see here. What's up? What's up, guys? I see everybody here. A lot of people tuning in. Thanks for tuning in. We're going to go through the listing presentation, listing uh, appointment, all that good stuff. Uh, for those of you watching on the replay, just real quick, I want to go through um, a couple things for one zero to diamond, the coaching program, we're over 4,200 agents right now. Uh, super stoked about that. So many people are finding success. So many people are, are finding a different way to sell real estate other than your normal, um, high pressure. Do you want to sell today? If not next, uh, mentality. Um, so I think it's the wave of the future. I think relationships over transactions is, is the new black, if you will. I think it's, um, you know, helping people is the new thing. I think with the way technology is going, um, you know, and people worry that technology is going to take over real estate agents. I think that, uh, you know, people that actually provide value and a real service and are creating real relationships with people are going to continue to win. Um, and I think the agents who don't are going to get sucked into this technology driven uh, real estate uh, discount broker based business. So, you know, it's very interesting that our commissions have not been compromised through this uh, so far, um, you know, where there's so many industries that are actually going down and crashing over technology. And I'm still making the same percent, five or six percent is still the same as the day I started 16 years ago. So it's, it's really cool to see that and that the industry needs us. Um, the industry needs agents to uh, consult them through, consult clients through buying and selling properties. This is not an easy process. Everybody wants to try to make real estate out to be some easy process. You know, real estate agents make so much money, they just sign a piece of paper and boom, you know, they make all this money. Not at all. <laughs> not at all. There's a lot that goes into it. And you know, the fact that we're still here strong and still growing, um, technology has only helped us uh, take our businesses to another level. So um, as far as technology goes, I think one of the greatest things that's happened to the real estate industry is Red X um, and the dialers and how you can effectively communicate and, and do so much damage in the market in terms of contacting people and, and finding out and reaching out and do a voice to voice to find out how you can help them. That is the name of the game is helping people. So I'm behind Red X. I've tried them all. Um, Red X, you find numbers, it dials them for you. Um, it's really one of the cornerstones of my success um, in the later years of my uh, career. I think it's amazing. Um, so there's a link in the description. You can save the $150 startup fee and you can start getting owner's phone numbers. You can call them right there. Um, I have a whole video tutorial underneath. Also constant contacts for my weekly email. I've been using them since 2010. There's a lot of them out there. It doesn't matter which one you use, but if you want to use constant contacts, there's a link in the description for that. Constant contact will reach out to you, get you set up and they'll send you my ebook, how I made a million dollars in real estate using email. Also, I worked a deal out with my web designer. If you guys want a real estate website just like mine, um, there's a link in the description for that. Uh, you just put in your contact. My web designer will reach out to you, customize your website. He has completed maybe 10 or 20 for, for some of the Zero to Diamond members, and everybody's ecstatic. These aren't cookie cutter real estate um, websites. These are the real deal um, over the top. It's zero down to 69 a month and you pay the IDX feed for the listings, but it's an incredible deal. The guy made a really good deal for me. I really negotiated them really, really low because I wanted to bring you guys as much value as possible. 
So let me uh let me go through the comments here and see if anybody has any questions right off the bat. Looks like everybody just saying hello. Uh, and for and for those of you who are in the Saint Pete. Uh, uh, St. Petersburg, Florida area. I'll be down there late November. I'm going to do a meetup. Um, so I'll let you guys know about that. But if you're anywhere close to St. Petersburg, I'm definitely hundred percent going to be there. Um, late October, like the weekend of the 27th of October. I think that Saturday I'm going to plan something with you guys. If anybody wants to meet up while I'm down there. Uh, let's see, looking for any quick questions. Uh, let's see. Somebody said, hello, Red X is up and down, but so worth it. Just got a condo listing. Absolutely. That's awesome. Okay, cool. So let's get into this listing presentation, listing appointment. Um, quick question here. Uh, what are my thoughts on crime, uh, chime and real geeks? Ruben, what's up, man? Absolutely not interested in it at all. Um, property owners are unlimited. You can't call them all. They're the highest quality prospects there are known to mankind. And so why would you do anything else? But that's just me. And guys, let me, let me just say like, a, let me just give you guys a disclaimer real quick. Everything that I'd say on this channel and in my videos and on my blogs and on Facebook and Instagram, this is how I conduct my business. I'm not, I'm not saying that you need to do it the way I do it. I'm just giving you my perspective. I want you guys to see it from my point of view. And you'll see that with the listing presentation. I do it a lot differently. And so I'm not telling you guys to do it the way I do it. I'm just saying, look at how I do it and see if you can figure out a way to make it work for you or incorporate this into what you do or that or take bits and pieces. Or you might like to do it exactly like me. Okay. So don't think that I'm here to tell you this is how you need to do your business because I'm not. I just want to share what's made me successful and then you guys can take and do whatever you want with it. That's my goal. And that's another reason why everything I do is free. The Zero to Diamond Coaching Program is free. Everybody knows, should know that by now. And the reason it's free is because of exactly that. I don't want you guys to, to say, oh, Ricky said to do this. I paid him. And I don't want to have to hold back hoping that you pay me later. I want to give you everything and you go do what you need to with it. I'm giving you everything exactly the way that I run my business. Um, this week, I closed seven deals, $3.2 million worth. I posted it on Facebook. So I had a big week. I have a big week next week. Um, September is huge. $200,000 in commissions in September. But I don't even want to hear anything about September because I'm thinking so hard about October. October is where my mind is. That's where I want to be. That's October is what I'm really worried about right now because I only have two pendings right now for October. So that's what I'm really focused on. Where am I going to get deals to close on in October? September's done. And that's the way you guys should be thinking, you know, what's next? Not, you know, let's close it. And, you know, they're going to close or they're not going to close. We can't really control that at the end of the day. We'll do what we need to do to keep it going. But we're not here to try to force things, right? We need to let things happen naturally and then try to find more things that happen naturally. Spend your time finding things that happen naturally over trying to force everything. Because what happens is you spend too much time forcing and not enough time finding things that naturally happen the way they're supposed to. People want to buy and sell. Your job's not to tell anybody to buy or sell or talk anybody into buying or selling. Your job is to connect with them and stay in touch with them forever for when they do decide they want to buy or sell, you're their agent. That's your job. So uh, let's see. I got a couple questions real quick, and then I'm going to get into the uh, listing stuff. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. Let's see. The email is killing me. I really need it spelled out. Go to zero to diamond.com. I did an entire video tutorial on that. I really break it down how I built it. And if that doesn't help, please reach out to me. I'll get on the phone and I'll help you do it. Whatever we need to do to help you, I'll do it. Um, will I be sharing the material you use during this video? There's not much material to share, but yes, I'll share whatever you guys want me to share. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, I'll be down in St. Petersburg looking for. I see there's a lot of people going to be there. So yeah, let's do it. Um, I will be in town here between November uh, 6th and 13th. 
my web the website my website can set it up to do anything you want you can do what lead generation you can do crm you can take it as far as you want to take it on the website so go to the link in the description and get set up talk to the web designer tell them what you want see what the options are yeah as far as the idx the ID, it's zero down 69 a month and then you pay the idx fee <laughs> Uh, somebody was looking into perfect storm now by Joshua Smith. I think it's really good. Um, I know a lot of people that do it and they really like it. So, you know, um, Joshua a good friend of mine and, and I really like the perfect storm now. I don't, I've never used it, but I've talked to a lot of really good agents who do. And I think it's a good, I think it's good. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. The links, the how to do the links will be in that video tutorial, but reach out if it doesn't help. This will be available for replay. I'm not a big fan of bomb bomb for emails because, because e video and emails um, goes to people's spam folders, uh, Yahoo, Gmail, Hotmail, they all red flag those video emails. If you do an email with bomb bomb that doesn't have the video, then yeah. You know, I think that's something, but I haven't really tested it. I have tested the, the videos and it doesn't do good on uh, getting to people's inboxes. Let's see, when I reach somebody's circle prospecting and they're, and they're already listed, is, let's see, and they aren't ready to list, is your only follow up your weekly email? Do you have a call? No, it's just a, it's just a weekly email. If they're not ready, unless they tell me, if I talk to somebody and they tell me that they're thinking about it in the next month or two or three or six months, then I'm going to schedule a follow-up call with them. But if they tell me they're good, that they're not going to do anything anytime in the next year or two or three or four, then they're just going to get a weekly email. And they can just call me when they get ready. I'm going to let that email do all the heavy lifting of, of proving to them that I'm hardworking, consistent, dependable, professional, all that good stuff. Let's see. It looks like the link that I added for the website development is not working. So I will look into that, guys. So just hit me up, uh, shoot me an email, ricky at zero to diamond.com if you're interested in that and the link's not working and I'll see what, what's wrong. I don't know why it wouldn't be working. Let's see, don't want to know anybody doing Facebook ads. I don't really know anybody. Yeah, I know a couple of people doing Facebook ads and getting leads, but the leads are really low quality. All right, cool guys. I'll get back to these questions in a, in a minute. Let's talk about listing presentations. Let's talk about listing appointments. I did a video um, Tuesday on the pre-listing package. Um, if you guys didn't see that or did see it. And basically I explained that I, I actually did it for a while because I had a coach who coached me to do it. And I thought, man, this is a great idea. So I started doing it, you know. And what I found out really quickly was, and, I, and I'm really, I'm really good at trying everything. I want to try everything and figure out what works. You know, like I'm never going to judge something and say, ah, oh, that's not going to work. You know, like I'm going to try it and see. So I tried this and at the end of the day, I did it for maybe, I don't know, five to 10 listing appointments. This was four or five years ago, five, four years ago. And what, what I came to realize was that the work that went behind creating the pre-leasing package and the time it took to get it to the owner really took a lot of time out of more important things, right? And when I get to the appointment, it really wasn't the deal maker or break. Um, the, the deal maker or breaker was, was me, you know, them feeling comfortable, them knowing that I really care about them and really want to help them. That's the bottom line. And so I quit doing it. And I don't lose very many listings. I do lose some. You're not gonna lose, you're not gonna win them all. Um, by the way, guys, I see some people are saying the real estate website link isn't working. Shoot me an email, Ricky at zero to diamond.com. I'll get it to you and I'll fix it after the live and make sure the link is working. Sorry about that. But like I was saying. It takes so much time to do that. Um, it really didn't make a, a whole lot of sense to me. And I lose listings, um, not very often, but I, I do lose some listings here and there. Um, but it's not because of the pre-listing package or I had one or I didn't have one or so on and so forth. Okay, so I knocked that out. Um, the next thing, like to me, the listing appointment, to get a listing appointment, there's three different 
avenues that I see for listing appointments. Okay. There's, there's when you're aggressive, you know, like you're cold calling or, you know, you're door knocking or, you know, you've contacted somebody to say, Hey, do you want to sell your house or whatever? And they said, yes. Okay. And you're like, okay, cool. I'm going to need to come look at it. Da, 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 da. And you set the appointment. So there's, there's the way of setting a listing appointment where you're the aggressor. You're being aggressive, you're contacting and you set the appointment. Okay. Or an expired or for sale by owner, you're calling, you're setting appointments. Okay. So there's the way of you being the aggressor. Then the second way is passively where you're putting a lot of marketing out there and people just call you. Um, people just call you uh, and you know, maybe it's a referral. Maybe it's uh, you know, they saw your sign or maybe they looked you up on Zillow and liked your reviews, right? Whatever it is, they're, they've contacted you out of the blue. You've never heard of this person. Okay. That's a passive listing appointment that you set. Okay. And the third way to set a listing appointment, and this is where I really win. And this is where most people don't, they have a disconnect here. The third way is somebody who you've met and spoken with and connected with, and you stayed in touch with them until the point that they decided they wanted to sell. And then they called you. So they called you, but it wasn't out of the blue. You've heard of them before. You've talked to them before. You nurtured that relationship until they decided it was time to buy or sell. That's where all the money's at right there. All the money is the people that you meet that aren't ready, that you nurture until they are ready. Okay. And when you can really crack the code on the system that works for you best to, to nurture these people to the point of a listing appointment, that's when you're going to win. What I really like to see out of agents is that they understand these three ways to get listing appointments and that they do all three of them. That's what I want you guys to do. I want you to be aggressive. I want you to go get appointments, right? And, and, and just so you guys know, I don't base my business on appointments. I'm just using the appointment word because we're talking about listing appointments. Okay. When somebody says, yes, I'm ready to sell. But my, uh, my objective is not to set an appointment when I'm calling. Um, unless it's a for sale by, you know, for sale by owners are different. They're ready to sell and set the appointment or maybe expired certain situations. It just depends. Um, but I don't base my, I don't, I don't judge my business on appointments. I judge my business based on my communication skills to, to connect with people and my work ethic of how many people I'm going to talk to, right? How many people am I willing to talk to on a daily basis? And then how those, how many people do I actually connect with? That's what I'm going to judge my business on. And from there, what system do I have in place to stay relevant with the people I connect with forever? That's the key. So, I want you to I want you to understand these three ways to get listings to, to get listing appointments if that's what you want to call it listing meetings meeting with sellers to talk about selling their property aggressively going after people trying to create relationships find out what you can do to help them passively where where you put so much good karma into the the universe people know who you are people like you they see your stuff around they see you online they just call you out of the blue and the third one is nurturing where you've met somebody that wasn't ready, you nurtured them into the listing appointment. Okay. So once you find somebody that wants to sell or they've indicated they want to meet with you to talk about selling the property or whatever the case may be, now it's time to set that appointment. Let's set a time to go meet with that person. One thing I want you new people to understand really quickly is that you don't ever price a property. Don't even talk about price with an owner until you've seen the property firsthand. You don't know the condition, right? Until you've seen it, you don't know the paint, you don't know the, the appliances, the furniture, the roof, and you don't know any of that. It could be horrible. And if you see pictures, pictures can be very deceiving. You don't, you don't know, even if it's a recent picture they just took with their phone, you still don't know unless you go see it. So a, a very professional thing to do is not to price a property. Don't even talk to them about price. Because if you mention a price and then they turn around when you get there, 
and they have this price on their mind, but then you show up and the property is in horrible condition. You can't get anywhere near the price that you talked about. You're in trouble because now they have these expectations in their head about where they think the property should be priced at. And, you know, you, you lost that situation. Now you have to try to figure out how to backtrack and backpedal yourself back and make them realize that you made a mistake. So be professional. Don't price the property without seeing it. Okay. And also that's another really good way just to create another reason to meet them because you got to see it to price it. It's another good way to create a reason to contact them again. You know, um, and there's there's two there's two deals here. There's there's the property owners who don't live in the property that you're pricing. It's a second home. It's an investment property. It's a rental property. And then there's the property that they live in. They're primary. Right. And then there's commercial. There's lots. There's all kinds of stuff. But we're just talking about residential. We're talking about, you know, second home vacation, primary properties. Um, so you may not see the owner. Like in my market, if I go to a condo, they live in Texas and I go to a condo to, to preview it. I'm just going to go look at it. Nobody's there. I'm walking through it. I got to see it to price it. Right. When they call me, they say, I want to sell it. And I say, OK, good. I got to go see it. That's the next step is me going to see it. So, you know, let's set up for me to go see it. I go see it. Then I call you back. We talk about price then we go from there. And so, you know, it's a lot easier for an agent just to say, oh, yeah, here's the comps. It's worth this without going to see it. But when you do this, you're putting in work and the, and the client sees that you're putting in work. You're making time for them. You're going to see their property. You care about that. You're just starting to really grow the relationship quickly and show them how much you care and really want to help them and do a professional job. Right. So, you know, and it gives you another reason to call them back. And when you say you're going to do it and then you do it and then you call them back right when you said you would call them back, they appreciate, they, they respect that. And now you really have some momentum in their relationship. Okay. So it's a primary home. They live there. Okay. Got to come see it. You know, that's, that's the next thing is I need to come see it. I need to come meet you. I need you to show me the house so that I can evaluate it. And then we can go from there. So we're going to set that appointment. Um, we're going to set it, uh, you know, whatever day, whatever time, all that good stuff. Okay. So here's my listing package. Now, I know a lot of you guys have a, uh, a really detailed, uh, a lot of statistics, uh, what you're going to do, how you're going to market the property, so on and so forth. But I don't do that. OK. And, and here again, this is just another example of me doing things a little differently, just based on my experiences, what works for me to give you guys a different perspective of how you can do the business. And I'll tell you something else that's interesting. A lot of the agents that I talk to, um, you know, when we really sit down and dig into a lot of my, my stuff and they ask me questions, you know, one on one, it seems like every step of the way, all of my stuff, it really creates a sense of uh, calmness. Like, you know, my phone scripts, for example, when people are using other phone scripts, it feels like you're forcing it where, you know, hey, do you want to sell, you know, and do you know anybody or whatever the scripts are, they sound very telemarketer and they sound very, you know, non-personal. And then when you switch over to my scripts, now it's like a big weight lifted off your shoulders because it's really, really laid back. It's really, you know, low pressure. You're not, you're just helping people, right? Same thing with this listing presentation. A lot of people are worried and stressed out about how to do the listing presentation. What do we need to do? You know, they want to go through this big, should we be going through this big 20 page listing presentation? Um, you know, are we going to forget some of the details and they stress yourself out big time. Right. And so I make it very simple for you. Right. And you can do it like this or you don't have to do it like this. But this is how I do it. OK, I show up. I have a, a Remax, you know, folder. You can put whatever company that you are. Um, I have a Ricky Carruth pin. Right. And so I show up with this folder. 
Okay, she's a black folder. They don't know what's in it, right? I just show up. I say, how are you doing? I shake hands. I go into the house. Okay, the next, um, the next move is, hey, how are you doing? We talk, you know, see what kind of conversation is going to happen there. Then I'm going to let them show me the property. Now, this is my favorite part because they want to walk you through the property and they want to show you every little thing about the property. And they want to they want to tell you why this is special and that's special and why this house is the best house in the neighborhood. Right. Everybody's house is the best house in the neighborhood always. Right. So I walk through and I'm, and I'm not saying anything. I'm just listening and I'm saying, oh, that is nice. Oh, yeah, I love that. I love this. All that stuff. Right. I want to be very calm. I want to be very I don't want to talk a lot right here. I want them to be in charge. I want they were in their house. I want them to be in charge. The biggest thing with the listing appointments is making people feel comfortable with you. This is the biggest, biggest, biggest thing is making them feel comfortable with you, who you are, what you're there for, what your intentions are, you know, why you're doing this. And if you can make them feel comfortable with you and who you are, um, then you have really won. You have you have given yourself the best opportunity to win the listing. Even if they're up, if you're up against, uh, they're interviewing several agents and there's some really heavy hitters, you know, some of those heavy hitters are not as personable as you're going to be. Um, if you're following my coaching, if you're, you're listening to my videos and podcasts and, and watching my Instagram, you, you're, you're in the mindset of how can I help this person? It's not about the deal. It's about the relationship long term. Because if you help this person, really help them, even if they don't want to sell right now, but if you take the time and you really help them, they are going to see you as somebody who really cares about them. And now it's done. They're never going to use another agent ever in their life. You are their agent for life. They're going to refer everybody to you. They're going to buy and sell everything through you. They're going to refer everybody they know to you. So take this serious. Do not go after the deal. Be very, very low pressure. And let's just fill the situation out. Remember my uh, quote that I did a, a while back, be 95% uh, low pressure and 5% high pressure. Okay. Um, you have to pick and choose where you're going to be high pressure at. If you see the opportunity, see, they've already decided when they're going to sell. It's not up to you to decide when they're going to sell, but it is up to you to notice that they want to buy or sell, that they want to sell and that they're motivated for some reason. Okay. The big, big thing in the listing, uh, the listing appointment is to make you make them feel comfortable with you. And number two, to find out why they want to sell. What is the reason behind why they're wanting to sell? That is the second most important, probably those two go together. There's really not one that's more important than the other. Being making them feel comfortable and finding out why those are those are two very closely related situations that needs to be your biggest goal to find out why they want to sell. What happened in their life? Because something's going on in their life. Did they get older? Did they want to downgrade? Did they lose a job? Did their kids go to college? Did they get a divorce? Are they just, do they just want to invest? What, what are they, what's going on in their life? There's something else besides, I just want to sell a house. There's a reason. And when you can get the answer to that reason and focus everything on that reason, we're just taking another step closer to being their agent forever. And we take notice of why they're wanting to sell. So let's get into my package here. Okay. So what happens is, is we're going to, we're going to let them show us the house. When, when I show up, I normally show up, greet them, talk to them, and then I normally set the folder down on the kitchen table, and I leave it there. And now I'm going to let them show me the house. I'm going to leave the folder there. And so what happens every single time is, is they show me the house. We're walking around and all that. We kind of circle back to the kitchen or living room, and then we just start talking, you know, because by then... I've opened them up. They feel comfortable with me by that time. 
And I've probably popped the question of, you know, why are you guys wanting to sell or what's what's causing you to want to sell or, you know, I'll fill out exactly how to ask the question. And two, the answer to the question tells you a lot. It tells you how motivated they are, when they want to sell, if they really want to sell. Sometimes they may say, you know, you say, hey, what's causing you to want to sell? They might say, well, you know, we're just kind of thinking about it. Right then and there, you know that they're not super motivated, right? Or they may be in not telling you. You can still fill the situation out. You're always filling the situation out. Don't ever believe anything you hear. You know, just go with the flow of it. But uh, we're going to circle back around. We're having this conversation. And then at some point, the conversation is going to break and it's going to be about the price. You know, like what is the price? Um, you know, like we're talking. And, uh, you know, we're talking about, you know, fishing and stuff and then, you know, this and that. And then, you know, we start, you know, thinking about, well, you know what, you know, what's the house worth? Because that's what we're really there for. We want to know what the house is worth. We want to a meet Ricky, see if he makes us feel comfortable, see if he cares about why we're going to sell the property. And then we want to know what the house is worth so we can make a decision. Right. What's the house worth in the current market? Okay, so that's when I grab my folder, open the folder up. First thing I grab is the comps. Okay, so what I like to do with the comps is I like to put it on one sheet of paper. I got the, I got the, the active listings here and the closed listings here. I like to put it on one sheet of paper like this, where I can just compare everything. I've got, you know, price, subdivision, bedrooms, bath, year built, uh, 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 size, selling price, close date, days on the market, price per square foot. I like to do it like that because it's easy to read. You can look at all the properties right there. You're not flipping through this long, you know, this long deal with all these properties. It's one page, boom. Now, a little side note, if I'm dealing with a unique house and I need pictures, I need to show them pictures. We need to we need to um, we need to like compare like real pictures. And you can't do that on one sheet of paper. If it gets that deep where I feel like I really need to bring my computer, I'll bring my computer, hook up to their Internet. I'll pull up MLS right there and we'll go through everything. If they want to see everything and it's a really, really unique house, then then we can do it. But, you know, most houses are in subdivisions where the price per square foot is normally, you know, where, you know, you can kind of tell what's up with the price per square foot. Or if it's a condo, it's really easy because they're most all the same, same floor plan and so forth. So I like to do one page comps. And so what I do and they start talking about the the uh, the price, I start I just say, OK, because I've seen the house and I know about it. Um, I also bring the tax. I like to bring the county tax evaluation of their property. Um, I didn't put that in this folder for you guys, but I like to bring the tax evaluation that shows the square footage, when they bought it, how much they paid for it, all that stuff. That way they can't argue with me. If they say they bought it for a different price or if it's a different square footage, it's like, here's the county information right here. Like this is where it, what it says. So I'm going to go through all these comps and I'm going to kind of formulate in my head what the place is worth, what we could ask, what we could get. OK, because that's what they want to know. So we talk about that. Then I just kind of take the conversation from there. Right. Whatever direction they want to go in. You know, let's talk about, it. OK, what is that what you thought? You know what? Where you, you know, what do you want to do? Uh, you know, that it could go so many different directions from there. Based on what they say, you go with the flow of it and just try to help them accomplish what they want to accomplish. Um, other things that are in my folder. So they get to keep this entire folder, the comps and everything in this folder, the, the pen. I actually leave it with them just like this when I leave. It's theirs. OK, so other things that are in this folder. This is a one page resume. <clears throat> I don't do this anymore. Um, I just put this in here for you guys because I do think it's a good idea to have this. Um, I don't do it anymore because I'm just, 
I'm such a people per. I just want to connect with them. Like it's just me and them and like our personalities. Uh, I just want to show them how much I care based on how I'm acting and what my body language and tone is and, and how, how in tune I am with them and why they're wanting to sell. That's my thing. And I think it should be your thing, but I do have this one page resume that shows some things. Um, also, I bring a blank listing agreement. Always bring a blank listing agreement because I don't know if we're going to list the property or not. If we don't list the property, they can have this so they can kind of look through it and then, you know, they can kind of know what's in the contract, you know, um, and we can kind of go from there. And then I always have a $20 gift certificate to a restaurant. Um, Tacky Jack's is the one I do because there's three locations down here. It's a pretty popular seafood restaurant in my area. So regardless of where they are on the island, they could be in Fort Morgan, Gulf Shores, or Orange Beach. There's always a Tacky Jack's close to them. So I always give them a $20 Tacky Jack's card. And I give these $20 Tacky Jack's cards when I show property. Every single time I show property or have a listing appointment, I take a Tacky Jack's card and they can have it. Um, I also do these folders for my buyers. I'll have all the properties we're going to see. I give them the folder. I give them little sheets every time we go to a different property and they can have everything when they leave. Also, there's business cards in here. Okay, so nothing fancy. Um, it's more about connecting with uh, with my with my potential client than anything. And uh, you know that's it, guys. That that's the listing appointment. I'm gonna go with the flow from there. I'm gonna see what they think about the price. I'm gonna see how they feel about the entire situation, and then just just see what I can do to help them from there. That's really the whole process the biggest thing is making them feel comfortable and finding out why they want to sell and focusing everything around that and then just trying to connect with them long term i mean that that's the name of the game so we, we covered a lot guys you might want to go back and replay this we covered the three ways you can get listing appointments it's uh, aggressively passively and by nurturing relationships you need to be doing all three um, we talked about at the listing appointment, you're going to make a, you want to make them feel comfortable and find out why. And, uh, I don't do pre-listing packages. So I think all that in a nutshell is, is, is my entire process there. Um, from there, I'm going to follow up accordingly and help them do what they need to do. If they want to list right away, let's list it right away. If they, they want to think about it, you know, that's, let's think about it. If, you know, I need to follow up with them in a week or three days or two weeks or six months, whatever the case may be, I'm going to start, um, you know, helping them however it is that they need to be helped. So I'm going to get into some questions here, guys. Let me scroll back up here and get to wherever I left off. Let's see. Coach Kaiser, what's happening? Let's see. Christian says, how do I jumpstart my business after a slow period? You really need to go to zerodiamond.com and sign up for the course. It's all free and go to the 60-day jumpstart program. It's one audio you listen to every week for eight weeks and it will jumpstart your business. <coughs> Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Looking for questions. If you guys got any questions, just type them in. Um, let's see. Let's see. If the link for the website designer is not working, I will fix it after the uh, live is over. And you can email me at ricky at zero diamond com and I'll hook you up with that. Let's see. Titus, Titus Lennon, tell me what you thought about the listing, uh, my listing presentation. I know you always have some pretty good opinions about my stuff. I want to hear what you think. Let's see, how do we handle when someone says they already have a family member in the field? Great question. Great question. So if somebody already has a, their mom or their cousin or their dad or brother is a real estate agent, there's really nothing you can do. 
what can you do? You can't do anything there. You just move on to the next person. Guys, listen, business is 100% unlimited. So just continue going down the line and seeing who you can help. There's thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands and actually millions of people that, that are available for you to reach out to and ask if there's anything you can do for them. Do not get hung up on one person, especially if their mom is a real estate agent. You can't waste any more time there. Now, if you, if, you know, something may happen. They may get mad at their mom and say, oh, I'm not going to use her anymore. I'm going to use a different agent. Yeah, that's fine. Look, if you want to get their email address and put them in your database and see if they come back to you later, fine. I'm not telling you not to do it. Um, I'm just saying don't waste any more time there. Move on. Let's see. What do I use instead of BombBomb? Bomb? I use Constant Contact to send my emails. I've been using them since 2010. The open rate is amazing. The templates are incredible. There's a link in the description to get signed up with them. And they will reach out to you and they will send you my ebook, How I Made a Million Dollars with Email. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Sorry, guys. I'm just reading through here trying to find questions. Okay. What about property valuation sites where they get a twenty dollars to $40,000 range on value? How do you feel about using those. Thomas, really good question. I guess you're referring to Zestimates or something like that where uh, some online website uh, decided they know how to price properties when they haven't even seen the property. Remember what I said, you got to see the property to price it. There's a lot that goes into pricing a property. There's, there's the condition, there's the location. There's a lot of things going on. Technology hasn't really figured that out yet. So I think what you need to do is just make the uh, let the the client the owner understand that 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 is you know an, an online that's a website spitting out numbers you know trying to figure out what your property is worth i am going by the market that's right here in front of me here's what things are going for per square foot here's what this house sold for here's what your neighbor sold for boom this is what your house is potentially worth this is what we should ask this is what we should potentially look at you know trying to get as a contract and, um, you know, that's that. I mean, don't don't dwell on it too much. Um, go by what has sold in the area, in the subdivision, in the complex, um, you know, take off or add to the price for improvements and so forth and so on. And, and that's what it's worth. You know, it's worth what a buyer is willing to pay. And so based on what other buyers have paid for similar properties is what this property is going to be worth. So just educate your owners. Let's see. Let's see. I was listening to a video of yours about pricing. It was really great. You have a huge insight on which price ranges reach the most qualified buyers. Nice. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Let's see. Sorry, guys. Just trying to find the questions here. Okay. Fred says, is this uh, is the comps from my MLS or is it a spreadsheet I made? It's actually a spreadsheet I made from MLS. MLS, I pulled the comps and then I created a spreadsheet from there. And then I just, um, I altered the spreadsheet. I deleted the columns I didn't want and I, I fixed it all up exactly how I wanted it. And then I printed it. Kenneth says, I give sellers two numbers. First, I say that the more dependable value is blank and the listing price should be blank and blank. Should be between blank and blank. Pretty tight range. Good, good deal. Let's see. Farah says, are you talking the CMA? Are you taking the CMA with you as well? Yes. Yes, I had. Well, no, 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 no. I don't have a CMA. I didn't have a CMA, guys. I just had the comps with me. I don't want to do a CMA because it's CMA. It could be wrong. I don't want to give. I don't want to give them false hope. I don't want to give. I don't want any numbers out there. I want to see the property first, and then I want to evaluate it based on the comps I brought, and then tell them a number. You know, and then once I tell it to them, I can write it down on the page that has the comps, and they can keep all this, and they'll know that that's what I suggested when they look at it later. <clears throat> but. 
I'm not all about the CMAs because it could be wrong. I got my Remax folders online from some website. I'm not sure exactly where. I'm sorry. Um, Christy, what, what, what website did we use to get those folders? I'll let you know in just a second. Should have knew. Let's see. Uh, I lost it. It was a good question. There's some good questions here, guys. I'm fixing to be getting to here. A lot of questions. Let's see. Would you do a resume if you haven't listed a house yet? Yeah. 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 Yeah, guys. Listen, as a new agent, you have a lot, you have an upper hand over a lot of older agents because you have time, right? You have time that you can spend on their deal, right? You've got time. Um, experienced agents don't have as much time. So don't be scared as a new agent. See the, see the value. You have you bring so much value. You care about them. You're going to work hard. You're going to make this happen for them. Don't be scared to be a new agent. You know, make a resume that you, <clears throat> you know, whatever you've done. But there again, guys, listen, you don't have to do a resume. I don't do it anymore. I didn't do it in the first part of my career. I did it halfway through because I figured it would help. But I, then I realized it didn't matter. They just want to know who I am and how I act. So just concentrate on your personality and don't worry about much else. How do you deal with someone who needs to sell fast that has an investor property that needs work? They also want top dollar. You have to tell them what the market is. And then if they want much higher, you just tell them, look, at that price, you're going to own that property for a while. That's just the reality. And then they need to make a decision. And then sometimes they don't believe you. They think you're just trying to get them for a lower price. And what can you do there? Right? All you can do is be as professional as you can be and say, look, here's the numbers. Here's the numbers. This is what it's worth. You know, if you want this much more, then we can do that. But it's but we're not, it's not going to sell. You know, in my professional opinion, I don't see it selling. There's a lot of listings that just sit out there because they're overpriced and yours is going to be one of them. <clears throat> and then they either make the decision or they don't. Christopher says, do I do electronic documents? Yes, all the time. Electronic signatures, electronic signatures, electronic signatures. Somebody said $20, even if they don't list, I'm broke as a joke already coming into this. Do $5. Do a $5 Starbucks card. Something of value is my point. But yeah, I give everybody $20 gift cards to restaurants. If they list, I give every buyer I meet $20 gift cards. Every single one of them. What about reviews or testimonials versus resume inside packet? Absolutely. Try it. I did that for a while. I had uh, reviews in there. Uh, that was part of that used to be part of my package reviews and testimonials and stuff like that. Um, yeah, go for it. Absolutely. Cool, nice, and simple presentation. Thanks, Martel. Let's see, I'm broke too right now, but but I see that could really make them remember you and make you stand out. You do this even with buyers you show, every single one of them. Do you always wear a polo or do you get suited and booted? Not at all. I wear flip-flops every single day. I wear flip-flops, shirt, shorts every day. Unless it's cold. Now, I will put on some dress shoes and some uh, khakis if it's cold. Here's the thing about dressing, guys. You have to blend in with your customers. You got to blend in with your customers. I used to dress up. I, I used to go suited and booted and that made everybody feel awkward because I was suited and booted and they were dressed. They were wearing polos because we're at the beach. If I'm in Atlanta selling commercial property, yeah, I'll be in a suit and tie every day. Blend in with your surroundings. See, what do I put in my resume? I just put, you know, like how many properties I sold. Um, let me see. I haven't used it. I haven't used it in like two years. 
how long I've been an agent. I'm Alabama Florida licensed. You know, all my little awards, number one and stuff, um, top 10. You know, I put that I grew up here. I uh, put that I love, you know, the outdoors and uh, I live a healthy lifestyle, you know, all that good stuff. Let's see, that on ask about how you will market the property. No. See, Tori, here's the thing. Some of them do ask that, but the, the answer to that is this. When it goes on MLS, it gets syndicated out to the world. Okay. Beyond that, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have it in my weekly email that that goes out to 10,000 people every week. Um, I'm gonna do social media push. I'm gonna do a postcard campaign, and I'm gonna make phone calls, right? So, yeah, I mean, whatever they want, you know. I mean, and, and nowadays when it hits the market, everybody sees it in the world. Somebody said, I imagine you're not paying $20 per card to a partner with the restaurant. No, I actually pay $20 per card. It's a good idea, though. We need to call, we need to talk to them. Who? Tacky Jacks. About? Like partnering with us because we give out so many cards. See if they'll split it with us or something. We'll work on that. Okay, Rachel um, says about the comps. Do I ever show pictures of comps? I, I did uh, talk about that. If I think it's a property that needs it, I'll bring my computer and I'll pull MLS up right there and we'll look through all the pictures of all the comps. Uh, Joan says, objections. What are my most common objections? I mean, give give me some example because I don't really get any object. I'm not looking to try to force anybody to do anything. I'm there to help them do what they want to do. So there's never any objections because I'm going to help them do what they want to do. I'm not trying to get them to do anything else but what they want to do. So there's never any objections. Mario says, would I, would I take an overpriced listing? If they want to list it, if they want to overprice it, if they understand it's not going to sell, they just want it out there, yes. I'm not going to say... I'm not going to take the listing and say this is going to sell. I'm going to take the overpriced listing and say this is not going to sell. But if you want to have it on the market just to have it on the market, let's do it. I'm more than happy to take an overpriced listing. You know, guys, I've sold a lot of overpriced listings that I thought would never, ever sell. Ever sell. Brian Chapman, what's up, Brian? How do you talk about your marketing strategies when asked? I answered it above. I hope you caught that. If not, just comment. I'll, I'll tell you again. Nada says, uh, what if they say they don't want to list it, but we are, we are welcome to bring buyers? Here's the thing about that, guys. Whenever If they're not willing to list it, then that tells me they're not motivated to sell it. And I'm scared to tell buyers because if I tell a buyer and then they the buyer comes and they think they have this property they're going to buy, but the sellers really haven't committed you know, I got to see some commitment before I actually try to work on the property. <clears throat> now, if I have a buyer that wants that property, really likes that property, then sure, I'll show it to them. I'll try to sell it and all that stuff. But I'm not going to tell buyers about it, just random buyers that I have. If I think a buyer would really buy the property, really, then I might try to work that angle. But I'm not just going to go looking for buyers for a property that's not listed because that tells me that they don't really want to sell. And it's hard for me to work on a property for somebody that they don't really want to sell. And that's what I'll explain to them. I say, listen, here's the thing. If you don't list it, that tells me that you really don't want to sell. And it's really hard for me to work on it if you don't really want to sell. You know, if you do the listing, you can back out at any moment. You can back out any time. I'm not going to hold you to it. But you got to sign this for me to work on it at all. You know, because I just, I don't feel like you're, you really, I don't feel like you want to sell it. Even though you're telling me you would sell it and all this stuff, I just don't, it's hard for me to move forward and get a buyer involved if this, if this is not real. Okay. Let's see. 
Should new agents wear a suit and tie or just business casual? Just blend in with your environment, bro. You should establish value without cutting commission. Don't negotiate what my dentist charged me. We're professionals. I've heard that one a bunch. Don't, you know, I'm not going to uh, negotiate my dentist because, you know, or my doctor's fee or whatever. Yeah, of course, man. Listen, trust me. I stay firm. I stay super firm. You look up my listings. 6%, 6 6%, 6%, 5%. 6%, 6%, 6%, 5%. 6%, 6%, 6%, 6%, 6%, 6%, 6%, 6%, 6%, 6%, 6%, 6%, 6%, 6%, 6%, 6%, 6%, 6%
And then I may, I may try to call them once a year or once every two years. Just check in and say, hey, how are you doing? They love to hear from you because they get your emails. They see you on Facebook. You're kind of like a, you're a little kind of like a celebrity kind of status with them. And so when you call them and they know that you're busy and you took time out of your day to say, hey, how are you doing? What's going on? Anything I could do to help you? They really, really like that. So if you can call them every year or two after that, that'd be good. Send them a Christmas card if you can, you know, stuff like that. And if you get into the deal with them, really go over the top. Really just call them a bunch about it. Make sure they know that you're working hard for them and all that stuff. They'll love you forever. Let's see. I've been so nervous about doing a listing presentation because so many presentations you come across online from experienced agents are so fancy and top of the line. Exactly. And that's why I wanted to do this video is to show you guys that it doesn't have to be like that. and You don't have to stress out about this stuff. Be yourself and people are going to love you because you're a good person. You care about people and you work hard. Bottom line, the only difference is you haven't put the work in to find the people that want to work with you. That's that's the that's the missing piece of this equation. Do you ever tell them that you will call them the next day with the price if the property is unique or hard to comp? Yes. If I see the property and it's hard to comp, I can't really figure it out. I need to do some more research. I will tell them, listen, I'm sorry, but I have to do more research to figure this out. Now that I saw the property, I'm going to do my research. I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to call you back, you know, tomorrow or later today or whatever with the price. And then we can go from there. Sure. Let's see. A lot of questions here. A lot of questions. Guys, I'm I don't really have enough time to answer all of the I'm gonna I'm actually gonna try. I'm gonna try to get to all these. Just to clarify, when you say I'm going to call people to buy till my ears bleed, what list are we calling? Your sphere? No. What you're going to do is you're going to get Red X, Geo Leads. You're going to target a subdivision or something of houses that whatever your listing is will be an upgrade. So if you have a four bedroom, call the three bedrooms in the same neighborhood and say, hey, do you need a four bedroom? Do you want to upgrade to a four bedroom? Um, if you are got a condo on the beach, Call the people have condos directly across the street from the beach, right there by the condo. And say, hey, I got one in this building. Do you want to upgrade? Um, stuff like that. Try to figure out what property owners might want to upgrade to what you have and call them. That's what I mean. I have a seller leads I purchased that won't answer the phone. What's the best way to cut co make contact? Have them send an email. I have sent an email as well, a phone call. Should I go by the house? Tori, you can go by the house, but I would say, you know, if you want to go door knock on the house, fine. But if people want to answer the phone or email, what else can you do with them? And listen, Tori, it's completely unlimited. You, you can't call all the property owners ever, 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 ever. You can't call them on your area. So why would you worry about one property owner that won't answer the phone? You're wasting a lot of time here. Don't have money for advertising. Uh, most most is BS, I guess you're saying. Sucks at advertising. Restaurant struggle for guests. Ask for $10 card. Hey, sellers, talk about it over dinner or night. Here's a gift certificate. Montana, I don't know what you're asking me there. Let's see. Mike says, just got your website. So Mike, I think, got a website by my web designer. And he loves it. Appreciate that, Mike. I'm glad you like it. I hope it does really well for you. What's my favorite fast food place? I don't eat fast food at whatsoever. I'm trying to sell one home a month. Would postcards be the way to go? John, no. Phone calls are the way to go. Go to my website, Zero to Diamond. Sign up for the coaching. Take the course. Do the 90-day action plan and the 60-day and the jumpstart program. Do it right now. Start. If sellers ask me firmly to take 5%, I ask them to meet me halfway and it's all and it always has worked. Great. Get five and a half. That extra half goes a long way. 
Let's see. Do I believe flat fee brokerages may take over seller side of the market? Not at all, Nick. Not at all. Flat fee brokerages are actually probably going to be out of the business soon because they don't provide enough service. Let's see. I make sure that I'm <clears throat> I'm the one who brings up commission first. Yeah, good good deal there. Do you do you still give three percent to buyer's agent if you take the listing at five? No, I do two and a half, two and a half. I split the um, commission 50-50. Um, there is a deal I'm doing right now for four and a half where I'm going to give the agent two and a half and I take two because it's a really close friend of mine. So I'll do deals like that. Um, but no, when I take five, it's two and a half, two and a half. But that depends on your market. Some markets are different how they split commissions and stuff. Do I have listing cancellation fees? Absolutely not. Like I will never charge you to leave me. Like if you want to leave me, I want you to leave me. I want you to go quickly. Let's see. How would you weed out buyers that waste your time? Tony, I do not weed out buyers that waste my time. I spend as much time as I can on buyers that want to waste my time because I'm going to develop that relationship. And even if they don't buy today, they're going to buy in three years and they're going to refer me everybody they know. The more time I waste on people, the more money I make. Let's see. If seller's not ready to make a decision because they're interviewing other agents, do you kick in your 5% rule? And what do you say? I don't really care about interviewing other agents. They want to interview other agents, fine. If they pick another agent, fine. I'm going to do the best I can do to connect and let them know I'm here for them. And I'm going to do everything I can to make it happen as if they were family, as if they were my mom and dad. And if somebody else won them over because they connected better, I can't help that. I got to keep moving. Call me back and then we get into a negotiation. I, that could happen. I could go down on my commission then to make it happen, but I'm not, just not going to automatically start going down. I want to keep it up, not down. Mario, is it, it is my market there. It is my market. There is a lot of low cost brokerage and agents in my area. Agents listing as low as 1% plus the co-op. You know, you just have to compete. Um, you know, when you go to a listing appointment, go and see what you can do to help them. Try to connect with them to where they don't want to use another agent because you connect so, so well. Um, but you got to get in there and compete. If they're doing it, then you got to compete with them somehow. So you got to figure out some way to compete with them, right? Maybe you do, you know, 2% plus, you know, I don't, I don't know how you're going to do it. I'm not in your market, but I'm saying this, the deals are there. The, the, the clients are there that want to pay you your commission. You got to go find them. Let's see. Okay. Is your CRM to put their email in constant contact? Do you have anything else that helps you remember details when with call or reminders? And where do you put past clients for follow up? Everybody goes in constant contacts. They get the weekly email. I have a um, a notebook that I keep notes in, and that's it. I'm a, I'm not very organized. I don't have a fancy CRM. I don't have a way to keep up with all that stuff. I kind of go by memory, and I just go. I take more action than I probably should, but it works out for me. So um, I'm sorry, guys, um, that are looking up to me for this organization thing and how to stay in touch. But the thing is this, if somebody wants to do something, I'm going to write their name down and I'm going to stay with them. They're on a list, okay? And, you know, um, the, they get the weekly email, so they're getting that, and I'm just going to stay with them on this list. And, you know... I'm going to stay with them till they either do something or tell me they're not ready or whatever the case may be. I'm going to keep them on my list of people I'm following up with. I always have a list of people that I'm following up with all the time. Like here's, here's my list right here. This is a list of everybody that I'm, I'm following. You know, I have a list of everybody. I keep track of who I'm following, who I have that I need to follow up on all the time. All right, y'all still there? I don't know what happened there. All right, let's see. Do I give a seller a net sheet to show them what they'll net after closing costs? I do that with the listing. When I do the listing. 
how, how do I prospect for leads on investment properties? Do I target them separately or just adjust on the fly? Just on the fly. I'm just calling people to see what I can do to help. Them. I don't care if they're an investor, a primary home. Do I stage in my properties? No, I always sell properties as is. I price it as is. I sell it as is. Let's go. So you really just do one appointment. So you really just do one appointment, which is when you view it. And at that time, you show them the comps. So as a new agent, how do you recommend pricing on the spot? If you need to, if you need time to research and get back to them on a price, tell them I need to go research. I'll get back to you today or tomorrow on a price. After I get the listing, do I still use colorful flyers or do you just use a property um, website with tour digital photograph or what? I have a professional photographer go in and take the professional pictures, put it on MLS, and they'll let all the syndication websites do their thing for that. Hey, Ricky, is your CRM separate from Constant Contact? How do you integrate your email list from your CRM? Constant Contact is my CRM, basically. If they're interviewing several agents and they tell you they've received different price than what you came up with, how do you handle this? I tell them, here's the numbers. This is what I think. I'm a professional. This is what I think. You know, um, I may even say if it's a really higher price that they got, I may say, hey, you know, that agent, they're blowing smoke. They're 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 just trying to tell you what you want to hear. I'm telling you the reality. And if you want to go there, that's fine. But this is reality. And that's my job is to tell you reality. When, if ever, do you compromise or cut your professional commission? What about a builder developer with potential for many, many deals? Yes. Like I have a development now, 80 units. Then we're going to open up another 100 units. I'm doing 5% on all that. So, yeah, I'll cut my commission for a developer. Cool. I'm almost to the end of these questions. The property is in bad condition. Shall I ask the seller to fix or remodel it first? No, I don't. I'm not telling you what to do. A lot of people say, tell them to fix it before you do it. I want to sell it as is because I think that the money that you put into it, you may or may not get that money back for what you can sell it for as is today. So it just depends on the market and the property. In the certain markets, you might want to do that. Certain properties, you might want to do that. What is the basic advice you give the sellers to get their property prepared to list? Not much. If, if it needs some paint touch up, they need to unclutter, stuff like that, easy stuff, let's do it. Do you give the buyer $20 every time you show them property or just when you meet with them the first time? Normally, right, when I, just, just the first time I meet with them. Let's see. Montana, I got you, man. Let's see. Let's see. Frank says, I'm glad I found your system. I know it's going to blow up soon. This is just fun. It is fun. Let's see. Can you pass them out to build report and ask the restaurant to pay for them to distribute? Okay. Yeah, about the restaurant thing, you know, I just get the gift cards, I give them out, and that's that. Kenneth takes many listings at 5.9. That's very interesting. Nick says, thank you so much for all the value you give. You helped me figure out what was wrong in my business. I signed seven listings in August using your strategies. Wow. I've had success with Zillow. Is there something comparable that is less expensive? Yes. It's called Red X Geo Leads, and you call every owner in your area, and you make friends forever. Put them in a database, send them a weekly email every single week on the same day of the week forever. Your business will explode. There are so many numbers on Red X that are on the do not call list. It really gets me depressed. Is your market different? Not at all. And I call them.
You know, guys, there's certain states, if you look at the uh, do not call list thing, there's certain states where real estate agents are exempt from the do not call list uh, situation. So look it up and find your state and find out if you're good or not. What do I think about Max Maxwell? Not sure if I know Max Maxwell. Craig Moore, Craig says, do more luxury property owners expect more of a presentation here in Boston? Some folks don't want to hear that all you're going to do is call. I didn't say all I was going to do is call. I said it's going to get syndicated to all every website out there. I'm going to do a postcard uh, campaign. It's going to go to my weekly email that goes out to thousands of people. Um, all that stuff. I'm going to do social media campaign. I didn't just say I was going to call. I said, I, I said all this kind of stuff I was going to do. So keep it in perspective. If they wanted me to do an open house, I'll do an open house. You know, keep it in perspective, Craig. And also, if, um, you know, watch the other agents. What are they doing? What are they saying? Right? What are they What are they saying? Like, what are they saying that's so, like, up there in Boston, you say? what What's so different in Boston? What do you... What do you think that they want to hear? All right. Do I charge a broker admin fee in the addition of 6%? No. My company wants me to, but I don't because I'm not going to charge my client an extra fee. That's just a thorn in their side that's going to give them a reason not to use me later. I'm about to become newly licensed agent. I'm a little overwhelmed with making a decision on brokers. Should I hang my license with? I don't want to make the wrong decision. Any suggestions? Van, listen to me really loud and clear here. It doesn't matter who you go with the first time. Um, go with somebody who you feel like is going to help you learn. And what's going to happen is, is after a year or so, and you actually get to where you got your feet wet a little bit, then you decide where you want to go. You're probably not going to end up where you start. You're going to change companies a couple times probably before you find your home. Um, so don't worry about it in the beginning. It doesn't even really matter about the split because you're not going to sell that much property in the beginning. Go with someone who's going to teach you everything that you, you know, go with somebody who you feel is going to teach you as much as you, you they can. That's the most important thing. Let's see. Do I have a checklist for a uh, listing process? I don't. Why weekly emails? Because weekly emails is frequent enough to, to, to stay relevant with them, A, and B, show them how dependable you are and hardworking. If it's every other, if it's every other week, it's not enough. They don't, they don't think you're working every, they think you're not working one week, working one week, not working one week. When they see it every single week on the same day of the week forever and you got that consistency, it creates the relationship deeper for you without you having to do contact them. The 101 item listing presentation is probably too long, correct? Yeah, because I got like a five piece listing presentation. Do I call expired and for sale by owners? No, that's not my preference. I will. I can be successful with them. I like them, um, but it's not my preference. I like circle prospecting. How do I keep contract of my leads? I just write it down in a notebook on a piece of paper. That's it. For buyers, do I do broker um, buyer broker agreement? Never. Never have, never will. If they don't want to use me, I want them to go somewhere else. If I show them property, they don't like me, they don't want to do business with me, I want them to go somewhere else. I don't want them to feel like they're tied to me. I just got MailChimp for my weekly email. Constant contact might be better, but for now, um, cool. Craig, absolutely, man. Great stuff. Got Red X, got constant contact. Going to start hitting it uh, after researching the script over the weekend. Send out first weekly email today. Nice. Cool. Well, look, guys, looks like I've answered all the questions. It's been about an hour and a half that we've been live. So I'm going to shut it down. 
I just want to give a big shout out to all you zero to diamond members out there. Um, for over 4,200 people right now, we're growing at about 50 people, um, 50 people a day. It's all free. Um, I don't want to dime. I just want you guys to succeed. When I come speak in your town or close to you, I want you to come see me. I want to see you. I want to shake your hand. I want to have dinner. I want to sign a book. I want you to read my books. Um, and I want you to uh, just take what I'm teaching you and just get out there and just make it happen. Winners, just make it happen. And people that do not win, they lose because they make excuses. There's an excuse of why they lost, right? Um, they this or they that or whatever. Their market's this or whatever the case may be. Don't make excuses. And here's the last thing I'll leave you with. Adapt. Figure out what works and what doesn't work. If something's not working after six months, don't try something different, right? Try a different approach. And when you find the approach that works for you the best, go all in, all in. I love you guys so much. You have no idea. I, I actually, uh, you know, I probably want you to succeed worse than you do. So till next time, guys, we'll talk to you then. Peace.